when one thinks of the greatest British science fiction writers, one thinks of Wyndham, Aldous, Ballard, Priest. But what about the writer who is most closely associated with the land itself, who really embodies the matter of Britain? Are we talking about Robert Holstock? No, we talk about Keith Roberts, author of Pavan. John Kingston Keith Roberts was born in 1935 and grew up in Kettering in North Hants. His father was a cinema projectionist, which might explain the strong visual sense in his books. West Kennet Longbarrow near Avebury in Wiltshire is one of the many sites of this kind that Keith Roberts visited and he was very fond of setting stories in these sort of places. Even stories like the Grain Kings which is set in Alaska in a future where the world has become a breadbasket and huge combine harvesters on different sites of political divides fight it out and their ecosystems in themselves. There's still this sense of the land, of the landscape, of Britishness, of Englishness, of particular national characters and of the beauty of open spaces. Despite being a North Midlander, Keith Roberts lived most of his adult life in the West Country. Oxfordshire, Hampshire, Wiltshire, Dorset. And it's Wiltshire and Dorset particularly that seem to form the physical and psychic backdrop of his work.
Roberts once said to Holdstock that they drank from the same cup in their mythopoeic obsessions. And this may well have been true because in no other writer apart from Holdstock is this such a sense of the land. And in Robert's work, it does seem to be focused more on the forest and on things which are more Merlinic, shall we play Merlinic, we would say in Welsh. The Chalk Giants begins as a classic English catastrophe novel, initially told from the point of view of Stan Potts, a mature, middle-aged, fat, unattractive, balding man who harbours an undying, unrequited love for a barmaid in a Dorset pub. The countryside is beautifully evoked through his meanderings through it and through the characters' interactions with it, but then the narrative flips back in time. Or is it forward in time? It's hard to tell, and the stories which follow which make it this magnificent mosaic novel take us back into deep time, into myth, ritual, sacrifice, and destiny. Like many people, Keith preferred Avebury to Stonehenge. It's got a common utterance now, but I suspect he could probably back it up with something else. This is the landscape Keith Roberts loved, like Hardy did before him, and that's why he set so much uh, in Dorset.
there is more than a little similarity between Stan Potts of the Chalk Giants and Jesse Strange of Pavan, except Jesse is younger, but equally, maybe not quite as ill favoured. The climactic measure of the Pavan is sure at Corf Castle when the rebellion finally comes into its own and everything changes. So Corf obviously had a particular meaning to Keith. Uh, he was obviously somewhere he was very interested in and felt at home and loved. With two books partially set here. is of course a site of war and in both Pavan and the Chalk Giants this area is used for wartime narrative. Aside from the rising in Pavan in the Chalk Giants this is where Stan Potts and his compatriots hide out just as the nuclear fallout begins to descend after a flash explosion over the English Channel. Nuclear doom in the English countryside was something Roberts returned to in later books. In Molly Zero, there are sidebars about an irradiated Midlands post atomic. Also, the same in Kite World, which was set maybe in another future, also set in the West Country, predominantly in Dorset, as far as we can tell, about Badlands irradiated, where certain demons, mutants dwell. And it's the keeping of those demons out of the non-irradiated lands into the wasteland, which is the job of the kite men, who in a way, of course, reminiscent of the Signalers Guild in Pavan. This is Corf Village, and I'm looking now for the pub where the Chalk Giants is partially set. Now, of course, it could be this one over here. We'll see. Okay. The Fox Inn, reputed to be the oldest pub in Corf Castle, 1568. Real Ales, panoramic views of Castle. This is all very, very Keith, so it could possibly be this pub here. It could, of course, be the one I'm heading for now, the Banks Arms. Let's have a look. So of course it could be this one as well. I was talking to a friend about my theories about modernity and how it was that brief period in history of near constant innovation and how it may just be a blip. And he said to me, so are we saying it was just an aberration? And I hadn't thought of it that way, but that certainly may well be that what Keith was talking about in the Chalk Giants and Pavan, especially the Chalk Giants where history seems to be cyclical and you can't tell in the later parts of the narrative what is past and what is future. It's fascinating stuff. I think it refers to, is it J.W. Dunn's 
book on the cyclical nature of time, which I can't say I've read. Colin Wilson's always on about it. One of the key stories in the chalk giants culminates here at Kern Abbas, where there's a real chalk giant on the hill behind me. In a later short story, The Big Fans, which is published in Ladies from Hell, 1979, is set in a village near Kernabas, a fictitious village, which is actually based on Kernabas, and Kern is mentioned. And the narrator, who lives in London, goes to stay with his scientist friend, Alec Bolter, who's also in another story of Keith's, to look at a new installation of very large fans and by that I mean like windmills like the sort of windmills that we have now and this was before this was happening in the UK as a new source of energy and it has a lot of the usual Roberts concerns it has a very beautiful young woman who's living with the scientist who the narrator becomes enamored of there's pub scenes there's concerns about the nuclear power that's used to get the fans moving to generate electricity and there's this strange effect upon the young woman and upon other people in the area when the fans are switched on and they seem to trigger hallucinations because two of the fans are on ley lines. Ley lines of course are mythical invisible lines across the landscape supposedly discovered by Watkins, Alfred Watkins, Welsh writer, author of The Old Straight Track back in the early part of the 20th century and in the big fans two of these turbines are based on them and it trips these hallucinations where Sarah the young woman in the story and others can see an ancient settlement houses on stilts water and it conjures up a lot of the sort of backgrounds that we see in the stories in the chalk giants <laughs> 